Hi, welcome back to Baxter West. I'm James. Well, this week's video is going to be about roofing, and I've run through some of the issues that I've discovered whilst setting about the rather arduous task of applying the roofing slates to the roof of Bexhill West. Now, the job's only half finished, and I've reached a point with it where there's a little detail that I need to check out. And in thinking about that detail and considering how I go about solving it, it caused me to think of one or two other things, and I thought that might be the basis of a useful video. So sit back whilst we get into that process, I'll run through what I've done so far, uh, and what I intend to do, and some of the steps that I'm going to take to try and hopefully produce a pleasing outcome. Now the records show that the building was originally slated with Welsh red slate from I believe Penryn Quarry, and so to represent that I've use a laser cutter to produce some strips of slates. Now these slates are three millimetres wide and six millimetres high, which scales out as a kind of an average size for a slate in the UK. Now that causes me some, some thoughts and some problems around how to deal with the hip of the slates. Now very often slates are hipped with a terracotta um, hip tile that's kind of cemented on over the top. But I know from looking at the real building that that's not the case at Bexhill West. In fact, either the roof covering has been replaced with clay tiles at some point or just parts of it have, because it's very clear if we look at the actual building that these hips on the back of the building are done slightly differently. And so what I wanted to do was explore how I might form the hips along here so they look realistic. So looking again at the front of the building, whilst these slates might be the correct scale size for slates, um, they're far too big for the clay tiles which I believe are now on the roof of Bexhill West. So really this isn't, this isn't that to scale as, as currently stands. However, I think that's irrelevant. I think as long as the texture is in the roof and it kind of looks the part, then that's good enough for me. But that hip along the edge here and there's a slight short hip here. I think it's important that I try to replicate that accurately. And if I were just to sort of put terracotta hip tiles capping this joint, I think it's going to detract from the overall look. So I want to try and replace this with hip tiles. So let's look at how I'm going to go about doing that. So what exactly is a hip roof? Well, as the hips on Bexhill West are quite complex, I'm going to use this 3D model of, this is Crowhurst Station, which uh, was at the junction of the Crowhurst, Sydney and Bexhill Railway, which of course terminated at Bexhill West. And this is a sort of a fairly typical hipped roof. We've got the main pitch running sort of left to right in this image, and then the hipped ends. And the hip actually relates to this line here, which is the intersection of the two planes of the end section of roof here and the main roof that runs along here. Now, just as an aside, this roof is actually cut down on one side because it, it intersects with this brickwork here. But let's not worry about that. In fact, let's have a look at that roof just on its own in its more simpler form. And there we can see the roof. Now there's quite a bit of complex geometry to setting one of these roofs out. And the length of that hip cannot be determined simply by looking at the building's plans. Because if, if we imagine we look at the plans of the building, we're kind of going to look sort of side on that way or possibly um, fr from the end this way and the length of this line is, is difficult to determine. You've got to calculate it geometrically. Now if you're using computer aided design it's quite straightforward. I can just click on that length. Oops, hang on, let me do that again. I made that confusing. I could just click on that length there and that's going to tell me how long it is. But doing it by hand is perfectly satisfactory and of course that's how I started out doing this sort of thing. Anyway, in thinking about the hipped roof, it got me thinking of, or reminded of a utility, which I think is useful for creating hipped roof forms. So what we do is have a little look at that first, and then we'll look at how that's gonna to translate to these tiles for the hip at Bexhill West. So for the purposes of this exercise, I've got the plan of Crowhurst main station building. And you could see the length of the area which is going to be covered by this hipped roof is 320 millimetres by 85 millimetres. And this red line here denotes the overhang or the projection of the roof over the building. And that is six millimetres. This has all been scaled to four millimetres to the foot.
So we're going to take those three bits of data, our overhang of 6, our width of 85 and our length of 322 and put that into an online utility to create the roof form. So then I'm on the website blocklayer.com and this is the home page. Now there's all sorts of really useful information here that's really helpful for um, anybody who's interested in any form of architectural model making as, as well as building things full size which of course is what it's intended for. So what we're going to do is come on to this one here, this little tab, roof calculators and we're going to go to hip roof framing. Now when we get here we can choose all sorts of things whether we want to work in inches or metric. In this case I'm going to click hip roof metric. And we've basically got three bits of data that we want to put in our length, our width and our overhang. Now if I put the wall length in of 322, the wall width of 85 and the roof overhang of 6. Oh I forgot one other important thing, we need to put the pitch of the roof. By default it's 15 here. I think the roof we were looking at is 30 so let's just pop that in 30 degrees. OK, click Calculate and we're going to run into a small problem. And it tells us that the wall lengths must be between 1,000 and 50,000 um, millimetres. Of course, this, is, this utility tool is designed for um, a full-size construction. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a couple of zeros on the end of each of these numbers. We're going to kind of fool it into thinking we're building a full-size building. And I'm going to click Calculate. Now at this point, if we had the original architect's drawings for an original building, we could, we could put the exact measurements in. I'm using the scale dimensions because I've previously scaled it. Anyway, if I click Calculate, it will generate a plan of our roof. It tells us the lengths, tells us our overhangs. Now what we have to remember is these measurements are all sort of 100 times larger than they would be because we've added those extra digits on, but that doesn't matter. Now if we scroll down, it tells us all sorts of information which would be really useful if we were building this roof for real, but we're going to make a model and probably that model might even be made out of cardboard. So let's keep scrolling down. It tells us how long the ridge board is and the common rafters and the hips and the numbers thereof. Let's keep coming down. It gives us a setting out chart for setting out our rafters and stuff and, and if you've ever pitched a roof this is really handy information. It saves a lot of time on site figuring all this lot out. It shows us the lengths of our rafters, in this case the common rafter and this orange one is the hip. It tells us the total length and gives us the angles that we need to cut the ends by. All of which is not really of any interest to us with model making but it's useful to know. Now if we keep scrolling down this is what is perhaps very useful. It gives us the roof segments laid flat. So these are the the the, the yeah the, the flat panels and you can see they don't join at the corners but if we were to cut those out and join them then that would give us the roof of exactly the pitch we were after. But really helpfully it gives us all of the angles and the length so we could geometrically reconstruct this roof. Now what's really great about this is it will convert all of these diagrams to PDF images and we could import those into our computer aided design software and we can, we can copy this. But the important thing is knowing these angles we can, we can recreate a, you know, our building roof however we want. Now if we click diagrams to PDF and I scroll down we get a similar sort of web page but each of these can now be created into a PDF. So for example if I click on this one this gives us our uh, sort of PDF of our roof. We can import that if we were using CAD into CAD and we can scale it um, just however we require. We, we can even set the scale before we create the PDF so we could put in full size information put our scale be that 1 to 76 or 1 to 43 or whatever we were using um, and, and it would create those patterns for us um, exactly. Anyway I thought I'd show you that, that's a really useful tool, saves a lot of complicated baths um, and I hope you find that useful. Let's get back to these hip tiles now. So then these are what I've come up with as the 
hip tiles and again these have been laser cut and I'm using oiled manila stencil card for these and I find that takes the paint really nicely but anyway these things are cut and I've scored a line down the center and the idea here is that these will be careful not to stab myself these will just form something like that and sit over the hips and hopefully produce a nice tiled effect up the line of the hip itself. So let's get a close up of these sort of in place and we can we can see how effective they are. So here are these hip pieces just I'm just holding them in place at the moment so no doubt they're going to look slightly wonky on the the camera lens but the idea is to try and form a one piece fitting. Now these hip fittings or bonnets they come with different names and they're they come in different shapes. Um, often they are formed with quite a pleasing curve, or I wasn't sure how to do that. So these are simply folded, but I think they should look okay. The idea is to try and avoid the join in the tiles or the, the slates as they, they run up that hip. So I'll have a go at, do a little practice of this before I attempt it on Bexhill West, because it's gonna take me quite a lot of time and I don't know if it's gonna look any good. So what you're gonna see is gonna be a little experiment, but I'm not gonna experiment on Bexhill West, nor am I gonna experiment on this, which is the roof of the refreshment room. We'll experiment on a sort of a throwaway mock-up that I've made of the roof for Crowhurst Station, and we'll, we'll just have a little play with that and see how we get on. Now it become obvious as you see these tiles progressing that I made a bit of a fundamental mistake. And that is when I laser cut the plain slate, I'd actually printed out a file for another building, another project I've been working on, and they're to a slightly different scale, they're slightly smaller. And I didn't notice this at first until I got two or three courses up, and then it became bindingly obvious that the slates are actually smaller than the tiles which form the hip units. Now, as this was just an experiment and I was only really interested in the hip tiles themselves, I carried on regardless. I thought, well, it won't really matter, but it becomes really obvious towards the end, particularly when you see it painted, that these tiles are all different sizes. So my apologies for that. That really was a case of me taking the eye off the ball. Um, and as this was really a, an experiment for the hip tiles, it doesn't really matter, um, but it does look a bit odd when we get towards the end. So my apologies for that. So I guess the question is, was my time well spent? Was the effect worthwhile? And am I pleased with the outcome? 
Well, yes and no. Uh, yes, I think it will work well, particularly if I take a bit more time and care with it. One or two of the tiles have split right along the folded corner, which destroys the whole effect of a hip tile, although we could pretend it's cracked, but in reality they don't tend to crack in straight lines along the hip. Um, hip tiles and bonnets tend to be quite robust, it's the other tiles that break. Anyway, it's, I think it's pleasing, I think there's some potential to it, I think it's definitely worth exploring a little bit more fully. Now I must say that when I put all this together I was sort of suffering from the after effects of my second Covid jab and I wasn't feeling particularly great and I'm disappointed that I just didn't take much care with it and particularly as I wore through the job and got closer to the top I rushed it rather but the outcome I think is okay um, and certainly worth me investigating a little bit more uh, closely. I think there's only a few hips and they're at the back of Bexhill West so I think it's going to be fine. As for whether or not this technique is good more generally, well I think there's definitely potential and in more skilled hands than mine the effect could be quite pleasing. So that's it, that's been my experiments with hipped roof tiles uh, here at Bexhill West. Now I've kind of got a plan figured out, I can now proceed and get those hips produced for the station building itself. Now in reviewing the footage that I've just put together, I'm really not happy with those sort of hip tiles being folded. I really do think they need to have a pleasing curve and I've just come up with an idea for how to do it. So no doubt in a future episode we'll see a variation on that theme to produce a slightly more curved hip bonnet. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheerio. Thank you.